Hey hey everyone and welcome to the third part of this tutorial. I have to apologize for my voice. I got a cold in the meantime, so bear with me. Now we finally make Ray collect his mushrooms and pumpkins by implementing a controller that considers animation. Like I said in the previous parts, both the scene and the controller we now implement will be part of the package with the next update. Nevertheless, we are going to implement a controller that can take care of animation right now. We name it Root Motion Controller because we want to make use of the Root Motion feature. Let's begin by defining a couple of fields. First, we need an animator. Second, our M Context component. Like the other controllers, we use on and able to see if everything is in place. We also need to set apply root motion to true. Now we need to implement the update method. We have to do two things. First, rotate the character to the decided direction. Second, move the character somehow. We use the rotate towards method to set the rotation. To do so, we get the decided direction. Define a step size. and call the rotate towards method. Then we apply the new rotation to the object's transform. Now to the movement. Simply add the following line. And that is it. Let's try it. As we can see, it works now. But how? This simple line is enough because we have an appropriate animation setup. Let's have a look at the animation controller. Here we can see two states. Idle has a transition to walk and vice versa. Here we can also see the speed parameter, which acts as a simple threshold for the transition. If you want a more complex example to experiment with, you may try the Unity Chan asset from the asset store. Okay, now back to the code. Even though Ray was moving, we can do better. Therefore, we make some improvements. However, keep in mind that this is just a basic example, a mere starting point, and not a full functioning controller for all the possible scenarios. First, we add the field Objective as Speed. You can use the target objective attribute to get the same look in the editor as the other Polarith components. Back to update, we now want to pass the decided value to our animator if objective as speed is greater or equal to zero. Otherwise, we pass the fixed value to the animator. We also add an additional check to be sure that we don't run into any index out of bounds exceptions. Now we need to get our decided value.
and pass it to the animator. We also want to manipulate the value passed to the animator in the inspector. So we add a float called movement speed. When using objective as speed, we use it to scale the decided value. And make sure that the magnitude is limited by movement speed. The same should be done for the rotation because we want to manipulate how fast the character can rotate via inspector. Thus we add a field rotation speed. And apply it here. Now we could be satisfied. However, we can add one more feature. In the current state, Ray would never stop moving. Even if its target would be right next to him, he would move in a circular trajectory. This is not very natural. In real life you would stop or slow down to turn around to your target. In order to make this behavior possible, we need to slow Ray down if the angle between his facing direction and his target direction exceeds a certain threshold. So we start with a speed multiplier that is either 1 or 0. Then we add the condition and for now choose a fixed angle. Set the multiplier to zero if the condition is true. And apply the multiplier at the respective lines. Let's go back to the scene view and hit play again. If we pause the game, we can check if the controller now works as expected. So let's drag this behind Ray and hit play again. Great, he stops to turn around as we wanted. However, Ray seems to have eyes in the back of his head. He should not be able to see something directly behind him. To solve this problem, we need another sensor. So let's create one and call him Fan17XZ. We make a base configuration with 32 receptors and create a circle. Now we need the Amplanar Shaper. Even though this is a pro feature, we added the final sensor to the package so free users can follow along. The pro users can open the Scene Sensor Laboratory and select the Shaper object. We then select our Fan Sensor and start manipulating it. First, we activate the circle selection. By holding ALT and moving the mouse, we can adjust the size. Then we select all receptors in the bottom half and remove them. Second, we adjust the magnitude weights for the outer receptors. So we deactivate the circle selection and by shift-clicking select the two outer receptors. Here we can set the magnitude for all selected receptors. We choose 0.25, then select the next pair, assign 0.5, and the third pair gets 0.75. Now we can plug the sensor into our aim context and hit play. Let's test if Ray still turns around when something is behind him. Still not quite as we expected. But why? 
Remember when setting up the scene, we set the sensitivity offset of seek collectibles to 45. This made sense for a circle sensor, but not for our fan. So we decrease it to zero again. We might also tweak our other behaviors. Now let's try again. looks a lot better. The only thing we might add is the aim stabilization behavior if we want Ray to be a bit more determined. We only need to make sure that the max increase is under 0.3 since we don't want it to obscure the aim wonder behavior. Looks great. Of course a lot more can be done. If you have ideas about controllers you want to share, please leave them in the comment section. And that's all folks. In an upcoming video we will also have a look at the topic of a car controller. What I can promise is, there will be examples in the next package update as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And see you in the next one.